and of course the spending of the £650,000 on Joe Miller in particular after Frank McIverney's arrival from West Ham. So great heart among the Celtic fans. The match gets underway. Here's Miller's first touch. Chris Morris, a supporting player. Here's McIverney. Miller staying deep. Bobby Smith is the experienced player facing him at the moment. This is Miller. Looking for someone to come short. It's Andy Walker who provides the run. Caught late with that tackle from Anderson, but the cross from Morris. That's a good save from Westwater. A very brisk start from Celtic with Morris making progress on the right to send over a dangerous cross. So Billy Stark is in the Celtic side after injury, replacing the injured Tommy Bond. So very experienced replacement for the Celtic midfield player who's lost out after being injured against Muller in the group. So Bobby Smith will take the free kick for the Fanlon. Grant releases Walker on the left for Celtic. Grant still going forward, covered by McCarthy, and that'll be a goal kick to the Fanlon. Peter Grant hoping for the corner, but referee Kenny Hope was right up with play to award the decision to the family. So listed as trialist this afternoon for Dunfermline is number six, Vetli Andersson, Norwegian under-21 international, who's from Blauweiss of Berlin in the Bundesliga, on a trial period with Dunfermline with a view to a permanent signing. Walkers by Kila. This is White. Next day. The Celtic have the throw, and they really have started this match as though they mean business. Here's Peter Grant. Aiken forced to go wide, now making space for himself coming inside. McCarthy's header. It's missed by Craig Robertson. Here's Grant. Now White. Blocked by Robertson, and the referee gives a penalty kick. Bobby Robertson shakes his head in disbelief. The referee Hope could not have been closer to the action. He was right on the spot. And waving away the protests of the Dunfermline the players, led by Bobby Robertson initially, the captain. He's the man who's been penalised. The ball was played across by Derek White, it struck Robertson and referee Hope said it hit him on the arm. So a penalty kick for Celtic, which will be taken as usual by Andy Walker, who scored two out of three so far this season. No mistake from Walker, three minutes into the match and Celtic take the lead. Andy Walker's 17th goal of the season. That's a remarkable record since his transfer from Motherwell. And this penalty taken with loads of confidence, sending Westwater the wrong way and drilling the ball home. Like of any, back to Grant. Good play from Celtic. They look brim full of confidence, and the boost they received from that opening goal clearly has helped. There's mixed day. Now Morris. A near post cross and McCarthy left with no option but to concede the corner kick. So McCarthy concedes that corner and it's another good piece of play by Chris Morris which allows Mick McCarthy to join the Celtic attack. Paul McStay's corner kick, the outswinger looking for McCarthy. Morris. This is McStay, Anderson goes to meet him. Morris. Being shown inside by Kirkwood. Here's Miller. Trying to sneak that home with the near post. Showing a lot of composure inside the box, Joe Miller. The pass wasn't intended for him, I don't think, but he controlled it well, turned, looked for the opening, and tried to deceive Ian Westwater.
headed by Aiken. Billy Stark playing on the right side of midfield despite wearing number 11, Tommy Burns number. Good play again between Miller and Stark. Every touch from Joe Miller being appreciated by the soccer fans. Miller goes across to the left. Pass inside is cut up by Robertson, but this is Andy Walker. McStay once again. Miller leaves it to McAvenny. Here's McStay. It was blocked by Robertson. Superb play from Celtic, inspired by Paul McStay. Taking the pass on the left, playing it inside to McAvenny, looking for the return ball. And the cross in the end blocked by the Dunfermline skipper, Bobby Robertson. Picked up by Walker, this is McStay. Joe Miller. Westwater's committed. Chances on, and this white shot which is blocked. There's McAvenny, headed away by Holt. And still the danger's not over for Dunfermline. Ian Westwater though is back on his goal line. Here's Miller. Morris playing it inside, there's Paul McStay. Trying to force his way through a rock of players. Eric White now feeds Miller on the right. Led away by BD. This is McCarthy. Miller again seeing lots of the ball for Celtic. Chance to run at Smith. At this time the cross is wasted. But his last cross a moment ago set up the danger for Ian Westwater. A difficult cross which Westwater committed himself to but couldn't hold. Then White had the chance. It was a good save by Westwater at the fullback's feet. And then McAvenny's shot was headed away by Holt. Jack's header is White. Robertson sending it wide for BD. into midfield again for Craig Robertson. We need dwelling on the ball, allowing White to make the challenge. Jack towards Robertson, he was caught late. That's a free kick all right, Mick McCarthy was the offender. Quick piece of play by Craig Robertson. So a free kick to Dunfermline and this is the best opportunity yet to put pressure on the Celtic defence. Cathy has joined the attack. Bidi and Kirkwood over the ball. There's Watson! Blocked by Bonner. And the Celtic defence was undoubtedly exposed. Joe Miller now trying to hit on the break. There's Peter Grant. Headed inside towards Walker, and the clearance is made by Holt. Oh, what a match this is. No let up in the action, but there's an offside decision against Celtic. It's Andy Walker. But how did that effort from John Watson stay out? The free kick played in by Beattie. Watson got free of his marker, downward header, and Bonner did well to keep that out. Miller to Morris. Comes off John Watson for a Celtic throw. Walker. Very little room to work for the Celtic striker, so he's conceded the throw. Smith, the former Hibs and Leicester City. Midfield man, then a defender. It's missed by Holt and McAvenny. There's Robertson. BD running into trouble, losing out to Walker. Takes the pass from Grant. Here's Joe Miller. Trying to go. 
It looked like it was a fine save in the end by Westwater. But here's the confidence of Joe Miller again, coming inside to his left foot to try to get the shot on target. And it's well saved in the end. Good tackle by Grant. This is Andy Walker, McAvenny calls, but it's always Grant. That's for McAvenny. The offside flag is up and will not count. Raymond Grant will have a game, the linesman. Telling referee Hope that McAvenny was offside in the past game. For well, you can judge for yourself. As the break was made, the pass was made wide for Grant. He put it inside for McAvenny. That's the point when the linesman said he was offside. His header finds Bidi. Kirkwood. White playing it into space beyond Bobby Robertson and fell on right back, but space is filled by John Holt. There's McAvenny. Now Miller. Through the middle for start. Joe Miller putting possession outside the Defelman box. Just look at the way this guy's that path pass into the path of Billy Stark. And Westwater brought him down as he went past. No doubt about that penalty award. And Andy Walker set up for his second goal of the match. Nearly finished again by Walker. 57 minutes into the match. And Andy Walker puts Celtic two in front with his 18th goal of the season. But really a magnificent play to set up the penalty by Joe Miller and the Billy Stark. But the finish by Walker from the penalty spot, a variation on the earlier penalty. John Watson, now Beattie, going inside White. Smith towards Robertson, there's Jack. And that was good play from the firm and it was well set up. Pass forward, teed up by Craig Robertson for Ross Jack and the shot, which he thought was deflected, goes over the top. Tommy Craig comes out of the Celtic dugout with some instructions for his players. Clearance by White. Anderson into the middle, but it's collected by Andy Walker. Here's Joe Miller. The early ball this time for Billy Stark. by Andy Walker initially with the pass to Joe Miller now look at the quality of this first time cross and this is what Stark does so well making the late run into the box the prodigious leap with a powerful header which Westwater couldn't keep out for 7 minutes and half time Billy Stark gets his 10th goal of the season and Dunfermline are on the rack Bidi with possession briefly for the fan on the right. And he makes the tackle on Grant, which gives Celtic the throw. Well, it's been a performance full of sharpness, urgency and style right from the start from Celtic. The Fern have undoubtedly battled very hard indeed. But they couldn't keep out this very fast-moving Celtic attacking machine. Well, there's been a key role, of course, and a couple of goals now for this man, Joe Miller. McCarthy plays it wide. Here's Derek White.
start his pass, a difficult one for Morris. Now Billy Stark. Entertainment plus from Celtic this afternoon. Roy Aiken with that powerful shot, almost getting his first goal of the season, but superb goalkeeping. Well, Paul McStay will take the corner kick. Beaten off the crossbar by Westwater. It was Billy Stark who caused the problem with the initial head glance on from the corner. This is for Stark again. In the middle towards McAvenny. Led away by Robertson. Beautifully taken corner kick that from each day. Flicked on by Billy Stark towards the corner of the crossbar and post. And Wes Water was happy to see the ball clear. Here's Joe Miller. The header back by Smith. So Wes Water comes across, he's had a good match in this first half despite seeing three goals go past him Kenny Holt brings the first half to an end it was quite simply marvellous entertainment Billy Stark was the player who got the third goal after Andy Walker's two penalty kicks and it was that third goal which for me summed up the Celtic first half performance Andy Walker picking up in midfield the pass to Joe Miller, the instant deep cross the run from Billy Stark, a powerful header Westwater couldn't save it, and that was Celtic's third. So, a stunning first half performance. It's Celtic three, then Felman nil. All you can really feel for the Firmlin at the start of the second half is enormous sympathy that they happen to be on the end of what, for my money, has been the best 45 minutes of attacking play I've seen this season. And it came from Celtic, inspired by that great midfield and the front play, and there was Joe Miller with a header. That was almost the perfect start to the second half for Celtic. A high one for Miller and Smith to battle for. Here's Joe Miller. The early cross once again. Stay again for Celtic, driving at the Furman defence with Miller on his outside. Comes off BD and another corner kick to Celtic. And if Celtic haven't had quite the same edge and urge in the second half as they had in the first, it's hardly surprising, bearing in mind the quality of the first half performance and the fact that with a three goal cushion they could be excused for thinking. The match was won. There's McCarthy. Led away by Holt, only as far as McStay. Well, that's opened up the left side of the Defermann defence. Miller again. Here's McAvenny. Morris. Up goes Stark once again taken very calmly by Westwater a good cross from Morris a powerful enough header from Stark and Westwater made that look easy Bobby Smith and Ross Jack is caught well offside it was well anticipated by the Celtic defence he stepped out in plenty of time to leave Jack isolated White breaking again on the left for Celtic. A very deep cross in lead and turned back by Miller. Next day, this White again. Oh, that wasn't far away. Skimming the crossbar. bar. 
Anderson. It was intended for Beattie, but it's collected by Stark for Celtic. Now Morris. Here's Walker with a dummy for McAvenny. Here's Morris again, and Celtic have to settle for the corner kick. Perhaps it was all a little bit too intricate. As Morris came forward, dummies there, Walker and McAvenny trying to set up an open chance in front of goal. Ball next day, up goes McCarthy. And this time it's in. It's Frank McAvenny. 21 minutes of the second half gone. McAvenny gets his fifth goal for Celtic. And it certainly was coming all right. A corner kick from McStay, a powerful header from Mick McCarthy, who was redirected by McAvenny, and Westwater was helpless. A chilly afternoon with a very relaxed Celtic manager, Billy McNeil, enjoying this match, I'm sure, to the full. So a substitution now for the Furman, their second of the match. It's Betley Anderson who's going off, and the replacement is Steve Morrison. Well, I wonder what Anderson thought of that. Celtic performance. I'm sure it was a new experience for him. Wilberson's head flick on. There's Jenkins. McCarthy. Miller. Morris to McCarthy and back it goes to Bonner. Derek White, Aiken, Stark helps it on, here's Grant, and now Miller, sidestepping Smith, but still to beat the fullback again, trying to go outside Smith again, but there have been some good tackling from Bobby Smith in this match. Well, that's given away to Walker. He's a great chance for Celtic. And it's picked out of the air by Ian Westwater. That would have been another tragedy for the Thurman defence. Walker picking up the loose pass, trying to chip it beyond Westwater for McAvenny without success. Away, Craig! Away! It's well taken.